the nightly business report good evening tonight sri lanka tourism development authority reveals that tourist arrivals surpass the 100000 mark within the first 26 days of september sri lanka's private credit surged 135 billion rupees in august of this year up from 60 billion rupees in july with credit to government and state enterprises contracting amid better fiscal management The Colombo Bosses kick off the week in green as the ASPI and S&P SL20 close with gains for the first trading day. The positive sentiment from last week echoed through with a turnover above 2 billion recorded. And share markets hesitant in Asia as strife in the Middle East offsets more policy measures in China, while the Nikkei dived on concerns Japan's new prime minister favored normalizing interest rates. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. Provisional data from the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority reveals that tourist arrivals surpassed the 100,000 mark within the first 26 days of September. In the first 25 days of the month, a total of 99,955 international visitors entered, bringing year-to-date arrivals to 1.46 million. Currently the average of weekly arrivals stand approximately at 26000 with a daily average of about 3998 which is slightly up from the previous week. The largest contributor to this influx remains India accounting for 21.6% of the total arrivals this month. Following India the United Kingdom contributed 7.4% while Germany accounted for 6.9%. Other key markets include China Australia, Spain and Bangladesh. However, tourist arrivals have recently faced challenges due to the suspension of the visa issuing system managed by the VFS Global Lead Consortium following a directive from the Supreme Court. The situation has raised concerns within the tourism sector especially regarding the upcoming season. Fortunately, there's optimism as the previous system is back online offering hope for recovery in the industry. New data shows Sri Lanka's private credit surged 135 billion rupees in August of 2024 up from 60 billion rupees in July with credit to government and state enterprises contracting amid better fiscal management. The central bank contracted 51 billion rupees to 1754 billion rupees from 1806 billion rupees as deflationary policy continued. Commercial bank credit to state enterprise contracted 20.5 billion rupees. Credit to government from commercial banks contracted to 42.6 billion rupees. The central bank has so far refrained from denying monetary instability to businesses and people, given them a chance to struggle up from the last crisis it created as it had done in the past by cutting rates claiming inflation was low. After currency crisis is triggered and the stabilization crisis that follows to prevent the domestic currency collapsing further, domestic demand collapses and cost of materials surge. As a result, new projects are halted. However, the central bank has threatened to create 5% inflation, which critics have warned amounts to unanchored policy and in any case conflicts with an IMF reserve target, which requires deflationary monetary policy. Before this year, the framework had no legal sanction. But under the current monetary law, the policy framework has been legalized and potential output has been written into the law. A delegation from the International Monetary Fund is scheduled to arrive in Sri Lanka on Wednesday the 2nd of October to assess the progress of the ongoing IMF program. The team led by the IMF's Asia Pacific Department Director Krishna Srinivasan is set to engage in discussions with Minister of Foreign Affairs Vijitha Herath. Last week the IMF said it looks forward to working together with President Disanayake and his team towards building on the hard-won gains that have helped put Sri Lanka on a path to economic recovery since entry during one of its worst economic crises in 2022 Sri Lanka successfully completed the 2024 Article 4 consultation and the second review under the 48 month extended fund facility with the IMF executive board last June the arrangement granted the country immediate access to about 336 million US dollars bringing the total IMF financial support dispersed so far to about 1 billion US dollars <laughs> The government is currently reviewing proposals from several prospective investors for the joint development of the Trincomalee oil tank farm in collaboration with Trinco Petroleum Terminal Limited. 
Lanka IOC PLC Managing Director Deepak Das announced that the government has initiated an expression of interest process to identify a suitable strategic investor for the joint development of 61 oil tanks at the Trincomalee oil tank farm managed by Trinco Petroleum Terminal Limited. The Cabinet of Ministers approved the Trincomalee oil tank complex development project on January 4, 2022. As part of this decision, it was agreed that 24 of the 99 tanks would be allocated to the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, 14 tanks to Lanka IOC and 61 tanks to TPTL, which will operate on 50-year lease. The CPC retains a majority stake in the subsidiary. Subsequently, on January 6, 2022, LIOC and the CPC entered into a joint venture agreement for the development of 61 tanks held by TPTL, with the CPC holding a 51% stake and LIOC holding 49%. Originally built by the British as a refueling station during World War II, the Trincomalee oil tank farm spans 850 acres and was designed to house 101 tanks, each with a capacity of 12,100 metric tons of oil. Unfortunately, two of the original tanks were destroyed during a kamikaze attack in a Japanese air raid on April 9, 1942, and another was lost when a Royal Ceylon Air Force plane crashed in the early 1960s. Let's take a short commercial break. Market updates on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The Colombo Bourses kick off the week in green as the ASPI and S&P SL20 close with gains for the first trading day. The positive sentiment from last week is echoed through with a turnover about $2 billion recorded. For an update on how the CSE performed today, we have with us Zaima Jihan from First Capital Holdings. Uh, so the Colombo Stock Exchange closed in the green territory for the 10th continuous day. Uh, with the ASPI closing at 11,855, gaining 81 points. Uh, so the stabilization of uh, political risk and the successful agreement that was reached on EDR has uh, significantly boosted the investor sentiment uh, leading to this bull run. So in September alone, uh, the ASPI experienced a remarkable surge of over 900 points uh, driven by the strong bullish uh, interest following the recent elections. Uh, so the index was on a consistent uptrend uh, till midday today, uh, supported by the heavy buying in banking sector counters, specifically on stocks such as uh, the Commercial Bank, uh, NDB and Sampath. Uh, which emerged as top contributors to the ASPI. Uh, however, uh, towards the latter part of the trading day, we observed uh, some profit booking as investors took advantage of the upward movement. Uh, market turnover for the day reached uh, 2.6 billion rupees, uh, exceeding the monthly average by over 60%. So this increase indicates the strong participation from uh, both retail investors and uh, high net worth individuals. Uh, the banking sector led the way in turnover, accounting for 26% of the total, uh, followed closely by the capital goods sector, which contributed 18%. Uh, meanwhile, uh, foreign investors uh, turned to net sellers today, recording a net outflow of uh, 123 million rupees. The forecast for the coming week seems strong, with the ASPI expected to brush 12,000 over the next few days. To get further insights on how the market is expected to perform for this week, we have with us Demantha Matthews from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. So the market has been on a continuous rise uh, post-election with the uh, uncertainty sort of uh, coming off the system. However, uh, what we expect is that uh, the EDR or the external debt restructuring uh, uncertainty is still in the system but that is also likely to uh, go off as the discussions with the IMF uh, from the second onwards uh, is likely to progress. So on a positive note what we are expecting is uh, investors to be more and more positive as the uncertainties gradually ease off as we uh, go along. 
So uh, turnover levels are on the rise and we think uh, 2 billion plus level turnovers are likely to continue and uh, there is likely to be high level of uh, retail activity and a lot concentrated on the banking sector especially uh, because of the significant undervaluation and also its uh, relationship to the uh, external debt restructuring. In addition to that, there seem to be some uh, significant interest into the uh, consumer sector, the capital goods sector uh, coming into play as well with uh, investors uh, moving into more uh, blue chip counters. So overall, uh, we think uh, it's likely to be a positive trend and the positive sentiment is likely to uh, continue throughout the week and uh, also uh, with the uncertainties likely to come off, market is, to like, is likely to perform very strongly and also uh, we are on the verge of uh, breaking uh, the 12,000 mark in the all share price index as well. So uh, there's a likelihood that uh, the index may uh, break that uh, barrier uh, during this week. Gold prices eased today but remain near last week's record high, positioning bullion for its strongest quarter in over eight years. This follows a significant U.S. rate cut decision and expectations for another substantial reduction in November. Spot gold was down 0.2% at $2,653.38 per ounce, influenced by a rise in the U.S. dollar. A stronger dollar tends to make gold less attractive to holders of other currencies. In September alone, own gold has gained 6% after reaching a new record of $2,685.42 last Thursday. This rally has been driven by the Federal Reserve's half percentage point cut, stimulus measures from China and ongoing concerns surrounding the Middle East conflict. All prices rose for a second consecutive session today with concerns escalating over potential supply disruptions in the Middle East after Israel stepped up attacks on Palestinian militant group Hamas and Iranian-backed forces in the region. Brent crude futures for November delivery gained up 1.56% to $73.10 a barrel and the more active contract for December delivery climbed 1.45% to $72.58 today. Prices were supported by the possibility that a widening Middle East conflict may directly involve Iran, a key producer and member of the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, after Israel escalated attacks on the Hezbollah and Houthi militant groups that Iran backs. Prices also rose last Friday, though for the week Brent fell around 3% and WTI fell by around 5% on worries about demand in China, despite fiscal stimulus measures in the world's second biggest economy, and top oil importer. The Sri Lankan rupee has strengthened against the US dollar in commercial banks today compared to last week. According to Commercial Bank, the buying rate for the US dollar has decreased from 294 rupees and 7 cents to 292 rupees and 56 cents, while the selling rate has dropped from 303 rupees and 75 cents to 302 rupees and 25 cents. Now we'll take a look at the Sri Lankan rupee against other global currencies. For a short break now, updates from the corporate world right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Sri Lanka's Hella Apparel Holdings PLC successfully raised 1.5 billion rupees through a recently concluded rights issue, according to an official statement from the company. 
The rights issue involved the issuance of 319,514,110 ordinary voting shares, which resulted in the company raising a total of 1,597,570,550 rupees as detailed in a filing with the Colombo Stock Exchange. When the rights issue was just announced in June, Hill April Holdings explained that the funds generated would be directed towards one of its subsidiaries. Specifically, the funds are intended to assist the sub-subsidiary in setting existing bank borrowings, providing critical financial relief and improving the subsidiary's debt profile. As of earlier today, the share price of Hill Apparel was trading higher at six rupees and ten cents, reflecting positive market sentiment following the successful capital raise. This development follows the company's strategic move earlier in the year when Hale Apparel Holdings acquired Focus Brands, a UK-based brand licensing firm, for a sum of eight million sterling pounds. This acquisition is expected to bolster Hale Apparel's international brand portfolio and strengthen its global market position. Sri Lanka's HVA Foods PLC said its rights issue was oversubscribed. The company said in a stock exchange filing that it offered 128,276,033 shares and raised 372,495 rupees and 70 cents. HVA Foods received 111 applications for 132,537,239 shares or 384,357,993 rupees and 10 cents. Accordingly, the right issue has been oversubscribed by 4,261,206 shares or 12,357,497 rupees and 40 cents. HVA Foods owned the Heladiv tea brand which offers tea and tea-based products internationally. The company said it was working on product ranges that respond to growing consumer trends such as wellness and natural organic applications in its annual report. It is also seeking extensions outside of the food and beverage industry and looking for opportunities in the cosmetics and nutraceuticals. And HVA Foods share was trading down at 3 rupees and 20 cents today. HNB PLC, Sri Lanka's leading private sector bank, has renewed its partnership with Haley Solar, the renewable energy arm of Haley's Fentons, to offer maximum value to customers seeking solar energy solutions. The MOU was signed between the two parties at an event held at HNB Towers in the presence of HNB AGM, Head of Retail Banking Kanchana Karunagama, and Haley Solar Executive Director CEO Roshain Pereira. This initiative is part of Haley Solar's new program, Nayak Noena Nayak, offering customers a low monthly bank installment that costs less than their current electricity bill. The savings from this lower payment can then be reinvested in their family's future while they enjoy free electricity for the next 20 years. HNB customers will benefit from special pricing on solar solutions and preferential interest rates on personal loans for solar purchases. HNB credit card holders can also enjoy attractive installment plans, including 0% interest rates for up to 48 months on qualifying purchases. Haley Solar will offer extended warranty periods and specialized after-sale services for their solar products to further enhance the value provided to customers. The company has also committed to providing ongoing support and maintenance to ensure optimal performance of installed solar systems. A recent session organized by the Policy, Advocacy and Economic Contribution Committee of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka focused on how the private sector can act as a catalyst in fighting corruption with a specific emphasis on the responsibilities of directors. The CA session aimed to raise awareness about anti-corruption initiatives, engage the private sector and explore actionable measures beyond legislation. The resource persons at this session included Dr. Harsha Cabral, the President's Counsel, who highlighted the legal implications for directors and the commissioner of the commission to investigate allegations of bribery or corruption, Chethia Gunasekara, who discussed the responsibilities outlined in the new act. The PAEC Committee of CA Sri Lanka plans follow-up discussions and aims to develop a policy document with recommendations for the incoming president of Sri Lanka, focusing on public financial management, tax reforms and on anti-corruption. The Asian Development Bank has honored Commercial Bank of Ceylon as its leading partner bank in Sri Lanka for trade and finance transactions for the fourth consecutive year. 
this noteworthy reiteration of commercial banks' trade and finance contributions to the national economy came at the ADB's 10th Trade and Supply Chain Finance Program Awards at Mandarin Oriental Singapore. The award recognizes commercial banks' achievement with the ADB assistance of the highest number of transactions in Sri Lanka's trade and supply chain finance domain between 1st of July 2023 and 30th June 2024. Commercial Bank was one of 31 banks that were recognized with 36 prestigious accolades at the ADB TSCFB award ceremony. Commercial Bank's partnership with the ADB contributes to the growth of the bank's trade finance portfolio via increased credit lines, expanded relationship with correspondent banks, reduced cash collateral requirements, enhanced ability to maintain or attract new clients, critical support during times of crisis, low-risk access to new and challenging markets, expanded geographic coverage to service export clients and the ability to leverage existing country line and issuing bank limits. The National Development Bank, PLC, has partnered with the National Enterprise Development Authority to facilitate the SME Connect online platform. The strategic collaboration, formalized through a Memorandum of Understanding, aims to empower micro, small and medium-sized enterprises across Sri Lanka, with a special focus on women-led enterprises. The SME Connect platform, initiated under ADB's Small and Medium-Sized Enterprise Line of Credit project, provides a national level digital solution to help MSMEs enhance their business capabilities and innovation under the guidance of the Minister of Industries and the directives of the Secretary to the Treasury. NEDA has been tasked with overseeing the platform's development to ensure it aligns with the needs of Sri Lanka's entrepreneurial landscape. This partnership is a testament to NDB Bank's commitment to its digital first strategy, leveraging digital solutions to drive economic growth and create value for businesses. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Share markets turned hesitant in Asia today as strife in the Middle East offset more policy measures in China. While the Nikkei dived on concerns, Japan's new Prime Minister favoured normalising interest rates. The stimulus rush in China did help outweigh a poor manufacturing survey and lift the blue-chip CSI 300 another 7.7%, having already jumped 16% last week. The Shanghai Composite climbed 7.1% on top of last week's 13% rally. Continued Israeli strikes across Lebanon added geopolitical uncertainty to the mix, though oil prices were still restrained by the risk of increased supply. Chinese stocks posted their best week in 16 years, while in Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index jumped over 12% on the week after Beijing rolled out its most aggressive stimulus package since the pandemic. Chinese stocks just posted their best week in 16 years. The blue chip CSI 300 index saw a rise of over 4% for a weekly gain of close to 16%. And it was a similar story in Hong Kong, where the benchmark Hang Seng index jumped over 12% on the week. It all came after Beijing rolled out its most aggressive stimulus package since the pandemic. The moves had been flagged earlier in the week by central bank governor Pan Gong Sheng. They include cuts to key interest rates and extra help for mortgage borrowers. There was also a cut to the amount of money banks have to set aside as reserves, which should free up cash for extra lending. One Barclays analyst said it all signalled that authorities know they have to act if China is to hit this year's growth target of about 5%. An economist at Japanese bank Nomura said it showed Beijing was finally getting out its stimulus quote bazooka. Property shares were among Friday's big gainers, rising around 8%. The market has been weighed down by massive debts at developers and a glut of unwanted homes. Later in the day, the sector got another lift after Reuters reported that big cities Shanghai and Shenzhen would remove all remaining curbs on home sales. There were gains too for consumer-related shares on bets shoppers might feel encouraged to spend more. That saw e-commerce giant JD.com 
close around 9% higher. And that wraps up our bulletin for the night here at the Nightly Business Report. Join us again tomorrow for more key updates from across the business globe. I'm Anuradha Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night.